Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, a lot more to be said on this motion by my uh, colleague. I certainly commend him for bringing forward this motion, and I commend him for being a strong force for his Inu community in this place, and appreciate his expertise on uh, criminal law from his practice in that area, representing his people very well. And uh, I appreciate that he's brought that knowledge to this place and has shared a lot of that knowledge in this motion that he's brought forward. Uh, based on his personal experience with the frustrations of his community members and having a voice in major energy projects. Um, his motion essentially is calling for this government to step up to the plate and finally support a genuine process for the engagement of Canadian communities, including First Nation and Métis communities, in decision making on major energy projects and that includes on the potential impacts on their human health, on their ecosystem, their employment and economic development. And he's got three key messages that I think are important that surely everyone in this place would support. That citizens should have, uh, have a central place in the decision making process, particularly when projects might impact uh, their health and environment. That there should be a respect for the historic commitments made by the federal government to First Nation peoples and we should ensure that economic development is in tune with citizens' perception of their territory and, of course, would ensure that they actually genuinely benefit from those developments, not people who live far from the site of those projects. I think it's very important, Mr. Speaker, to note that uh, the call for greater action by the government is not just something that my colleague has raised. It has actually been voiced by the Federal Commissioner for Sustainable Development. And in his report just this fall, he slammed the government and he determined that the federal government has been ignoring clearly its duties to ensure First Nation and Métis are engaged in environmental assessment and monitoring in major energy projects and in particular for oil sands projects. And uh, he determined that the government has firstly failed to collect and consider important uh, traditional ecological information. They have ignored their duty to consult and third, have made it harder for Aboriginals to participate in decision making on major energy projects impacting First Nation and Métis lands, uh, water, and people. Well, uh, my colleague has raised uh, some skepticism about the concept of social license, and I think that's a fair comment, because each time we reach some kind of consensus that we need, need to move forward on participation, consultation, social impact assessment, or social license, um, those terms often become perverted by not really applying those uh, principles in good faith. And so his call to the House is that we need to agree that we are generally committed to enabling, actually constructive, enabling a constructive voice for Canadians in decision making on major energy projects. And so we should go beyond the brief mention of a concept and give some reality to it. So that it actually includes generally environmental impacts, social impacts, and local impacts. And that those, that consultation be a precondition to deciding if a project is in the public interest. Mr. Speaker, we hear those on the other side talk about how we have this perfect review process and all they need to do is consider what's in the public interest. Well, the whole point is, what is public interest? And if we're not genuinely considering the, the issues and concerns of the locally impacted people, how genuinely can we really say that we are considering the public interest in making a decision to accept or to reject a major energy project? Um, I look forward to continuing a speech on this at a later date and appreciate the time to at least rise briefly in support of my colleague's very, very important motion in this place. Thank you.